Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching and or listening to this, welcome back to another episode of Drive Time Crypto with me, Crypto Chris, where I aim to bring you the latest news and events happening within crypto and blockchain community. As always, a free way to help the channel is by giving me a like, by giving me a comment, maybe telling me what you are most bullish on at the moment, or even better, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be appreciated. With that being said, let's start the engine and start our journey. As always, first pit stop is price news. Now, there is a lot of happy sentiment out in the market at the moment. And it's all surrounding Bitcoin and what it's done in the past 24 hours. And this one reads, Bitcoin ready to go parabolic, no reason to go down, question mark. The, the next one here is what led to the recent surge in Bitcoin and crypto market. The crypto market cap breached 3 trillion for the first time as the majority of the cryptocurrencies traded in green. Bitcoin rose to an all new time height of $68,530, rising by nearly $3,200 over the past 24 hours. Bitcoin took a bullish charge on November the 8th and rose to a uh, new all time high earlier today. And as Bitcoin soared past $68,000, Plan B says floor model shows Bitcoin reaching 100k this year. So I touched on this on the episode yesterday about who Plan B was and why it's so popular that he's in the news and because he's now being predicted what's been going on into 2022 and the prices and where he thinks that Bitcoin's going to be going. If you're not aware of him or you are interested, all you've got to do is type in Plan B uh, stocks flow and you'll, it'll come up with the with the relevant information. It says on November the 8th, the price of Bitcoin reached an all new time high. Meanwhile, Plan B, the creator of Bitcoin price model called Stocks Flow, has correctly predicted the last three months of Bitcoin prices and recently said that based on the flow model, the price will reach 100k. So with that being so popular that the feelings within the market is is really really happy at the moment there's this excitement there's the euphoria and especially when we start seeing green days and new all-time highs bitcoin and ethereum enterprise discovery mode the two largest cryptocurrencies by market cap may test higher highs after setting all new time highs Bitcoin and Ethereum have entered price discovery mode. Further buying pressure could push Bitcoin to nearly $75,000. Likewise, Ethereum might rise to $9,350 in buy orders if buy orders continue to pile up. There is no reason why we can't hit them numbers, especially with Ethereum, with everything that's going on it and the amount of the traffic and transactions happening on that network. Why it shouldn't be at $10,000? Of course, it should be at $10,000. It's great. Apart from the, the high gas fees, the, the actual blockchain is an amazing ecosystem, so it deserves to be up at them prices. Whether we'll see it or not, we're waiting to be seen. But nevertheless, the market is really, really bullish at the moment. And this one reads, Bitcoin sentiment suggests serious greed, but will a correction come? As Bitcoin made an all-new time high above 68,000, the crypto market sentiment changed to extreme greed. Periods of such sentiment have led to corrections in the past, but will the trend be similar? So basically, as the prices have gone up, there is a, a fear to greed index. And when the prices are low and the, the news coming out isn't that great about the space, a lot of people they live in fear and they're not buying and they've sold off and and there's not really good sentiment about the market and then you go all the way over the other end of the scale to extreme greed but what happens is when the prices go up and you hit this extreme greed the the happiness the euphoria the we're not going down it's only going up when that enters what happens is then you have professional institutions professional traders selling into this excitement and and joy about the prices so the ones that are bought at low points when there was extreme fear the ones that have been getting in on the dick so as low as thirty thousand dollars in the middle of the year now they're going to be looking to to get out of the market when there's ex, this extreme greed in there where where people believe that it can't go anywhere and because of that when you start seeing these sell orders come in that's what normally has a knock back on the market and you'll see bitcoin and the other coins correct back down as as people start to take profits now that was really it for the for the price news just because we have set all new time highs and the the 
the sentiments the same that we are going to carry on setting these larger numbers. Bitcoin's going to go to these larger numbers. Ethereum's going to go to these larger numbers. So there wasn't that many articles about because because it's sort of proving it at the moment. So it, it'd be seem a bit of a waste of time to put an article as it's setting all new time highs. Oh, can we reach that? Well, it looks like we are going to. But in my video yesterday, what I explained about is that almost the market's almost waiting for a the the signal the sign the the news story the relevant event the the big the big green tick yes you are good to go start investing and all the retail piling because there has been this really major event or or news story that's going to happen and what you'll see throughout this video it's kind of got a, a recurring theme at the moment so it's not price news, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in stay in this lane. But micro strategies, Michael Saylor tells Elon Musk to buy twenty five billion dollars in Bitcoin from potential proceeds from Tesla's stock sale. Now, if you're not aware of who Michael Saylor is, micro strategy is a company who changed their whole business model uh, recently. I say recently, it's it's going back some time now, but nevertheless, they have bought a phenomenal amount of Bitcoin. I'm not sure if they are the, the largest holder of Bitcoin. I think uh, that is Grayscale, uh, but I believe that these might be the second largest holder. Anyway, they hold a roughly, I think it's about 180,000 Bitcoin which is a phenomenal amount of Bitcoin if you put that in monetary value. So this company owns 180,000. And if you're not sure why he's telling Elon Musk to buy 25 billion, Elon Musk put a tweet out the other day asking that whether he should sell 10% of his Tesla stocks. And if he does, if the Twitter poll came in, he would inevitably adhere to that. He, he made the promise. And... Anyway, of course, the Twitter poll did say that he should sell sell his sell his ten uh, percent of his uh, stocks within Tesla, and that subsequently has seen the Tesla price hit a a real correction today in fear that he's going to sell off that that stock and and dump it on the market, and so you've seen the Tesla price scale right back today subsequently. But nevertheless, uh, Michael Saylor tells Elon Musk to buy twenty five billion dollars worth. Now, the reason why I'm I'm interested in this story is because this is the kind of rhetoric that you need. Imagine if he did come out with and say, I have bought $25 billion worth of, of Bitcoin. And the, the last time that we had that kind of news is when Tesla were actually buying that Bitcoin. So, and I think they bought $2, two billion pounds, uh, dollars worth of, of Bitcoin. So you can imagine... The, how crazy the market's going to go if Elon Musk buys $25 billion worth. Whether he will or not, I don't know. I'm not going to go into the article too much, but this is the kind of news stories that are starting to come out now, and you're, this is what's going to drag the retail in. So, again, staying in this lane, I'm going to carry on the, with these articles because it says PayPal showed a 13% increase in its revenue as it plans to expand cryptos expand crypto services so if this is this was really popular news paypal reports 13 percent revenue increase plans to increase crypto offerings and the reason why i'm staying in this lane is because again this is all the new you imagine the the the, the reach of paypal and it, if you didn't realize or you you've you've got the paypal app but you've just not been paying attention if you are in america or you, the uk i'm not sure if they've rolled it out in anywhere in the in the rest of europe or the world yet but definitely know that within america and the uk paypal you can buy cryptocurrency on the app you you the, there is a, a single tab to it so you imagine all these people now that have got access to paypal trust paypal because they've been using it for ebay and etc and all the rest of it it's a phenomenal com company and now they are allowing you to buy different cryptocurrencies and it sounds like they're going to expand the the range of what you can buy now you've got a really easy app that you are already well used to using that is a trusted source of your money offering you these cryptocurrencies and now they're pushing it more and they're bringing it more to the market and they're making it more aware and it's these kind of news stories that are all starting to mingle together which is going to be the 
the subsequent event, the 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 enlightening to make people think, you know what, I'm I'm getting in and and as one starts to go in, the next one starts to go in, and that's what gets the stampede going. And if you're not aware, PayPal as well, they're on they're on record. I'm not. I think that it's curbed off, but for a long time they were buying about 900 Bitcoin a day. Now, if you don't know what the 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 relevance of that is, that at the moment the reward offerings for Bitcoin they they can mine about 900 coins a day. So at one point. PayPal alone were buying all them new Bitcoin. So you can imagine the miners aren't going to sell all them Bitcoin that they are producing. They've got to keep some back for themselves. And there's everybody else that's buying Bitcoin. So you can that, that shows you what the kind of accumulation that's going on and the amount that's going off the exchanges. But nevertheless, that's not what I wanted to cover in this story. I'm digressing a bit. What I wanted to show you is how the the news articles are now starting to line up. Everything's positive. Everything's showing that it's great to be in cryptocurrency at the moment and everything's directed at the, the, the main retail market now. And I, I think it's just a case of the whales need to decide when they're going to let let go of this and let the prices rise but yeah it's it's really exciting times and i'm still going to stay in this lane even though it's not price news please stick with me because you, you'll understand what i mean and this one reads apple ceo tim cook reve uh, reveals he owns crypto says it's reasonable to have it in investment portfolio so again a massive company a massive company with a massive reach with so much community and so much belief and this was one of the, the the major stories of the day so again breaking apple ceo reveals he owns cryptocurrency in his portfolio the ceo of the world's second most valuable company apple reveals he personally holds crypto so you imagine how many people own an apple phone an iphone how many people own apple max and how many people you, you see them queuing up outside shops for the latest release of this product. So when the, the, the company that they believe in, that they, they, they buy into this brand so much, that they believe in that, the person that owns, well, the CEO of it is owning Bitcoin. Again, it's just putting it out there in front of the retailer. Well, if he's got it, let's, let's get it ourselves. It reads, Tim Cook, the CEO of the world's second largest public traded company. Apple has today revealed his personal opinion regarding crypto investment. He, however, tempted, uh, tempered any hopes of his company investing in the asset in the near future. So he's not saying that Apple are going to get involved, but that could be. Imagine if it came out, right, Apple are investing in it. And that, that again, that's one of the news stories that, why wow, everybody will pile in at that point. This is it. We're, we're on. If Apple can do it, so can I. But yeah, speaking to the New York Times Deal Book Online Summit Cup, uh, Poise that it is reasonable to own some crypto assets for the sake of diversification. I think it's reasonable to own it as part of a diversified portfolio. So, in a way, it's it's just news of another wealthy person getting richer because he owns cryptocurrencies. And yeah, we see it all the time. But that's not the 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 main the main crux of this story and why I'm getting excited over it. It's because all the stars are starting to align with all this positive news from big companies, getting it out there, putting it in front of people, getting it towards the mainstream media. And, and, and it's really is a, that you, you can feel, feel the news and the, the good news and the, the good signs. Uh, it, it's palpable it, when you, when you've been through such a rough, Summer where all the news that was coming out was bad. Bitcoin was bad. It's not good for the environment. China are banning it. Everything's going, it's all going downhill. It's, there was so much bad news through the summer that when all you read now is this positive news and you're seeing all new time highs and all these companies do it, the, the feeling's palpable. You're ready for it to explode. It's just holding back for that. And I don't know which, which piece of news is going to do it or what's going to attract the masses to the market, but it is just around the corner. I, I can actually sense it. And that's what's going to pile everybody everybody back in. So, yeah, that was sort of all the price news. wasn't the price news. It was kind of the prices are looking good, but this is good news as well, which is only going to enhance the prices kind of news. And with that being said, let's pull away from this pit stop because I got very excited and let's carry on our journey. Next up in 
news of Ethereum. It is Ethereum 2.0 is vulnerable to attacks, but developer proposes a solution. It says Ethereum's transition to 2.0 may be blighted by serious attacks in the future. A research firm identifies three methods uh, such attacks could be carried out on the network. Top Ethereum developer allies fear, uh, fears and offers multiple fixes to the hypothetical security breach. So the entire cryptocurrency ecosystem is waiting with bated breath over the highly anticipated ETH 2.0, which I'm not surprised because it's been supposed to be coming since 2016 slash 17. So it's been a long time coming uh, with every innovation. There may be hitches along the way, but Ethereum cannot afford to experience any security breaches after the switch, which is a understatement if I've never heard one. Um, so basically, yeah, you, you've got to understand that Ethereum itself I'm not sure on their total market cap if I have a quick look now. So their total market cap is half a trillion dollars. So what, you, what you've got to realise is when you've got that kind of volume of money within your ecosystem, you've got to be crystal clear. You've got to be crystal clear that when you launch this upgrade, that it is watertight, there is no bugs, there is no backdoors, there is no way anybody can exploit it. Because if you, if somebody can exploit that, that is catastrophic, not only for Ethereum, not only for the people that hold Ethereum, but for the whole crypto market. Because if something that is so prominent and holds so much value and so much trust within it and so much stuff being built on it, if that ends up getting attacked, and and it's a major attack it's it's like somebody being able to walk into one of the biggest banking institutes and and take take the money and that if somebody did that would you want to trust that bank with your money if your money went missing out of that bank would you not take the rest of your money out of that bank and want to put it somewhere else, but then you're like, well, where do I put it? If Ethereum's network wasn't secure, where can I put it that is secure? The, the ramifications of it could be massive. So they really need to get this right. So that's why maybe you are seeing such a delay from 2017 to, to present day. There is still no actual release. They keep on saying it's just round the corner, but whether it is or not, who knows? There is a there is a lot of money locked up in in uh, the staking of ETH two point oh. I don't know exactly what the what the money tied up in the 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 network is. And for those that aren't aware of what ETH two point oh is, basically it's Ethereum trying to become a proof of stake rather than a proof of work. So it's not as energy intensive and lab uh, like laborious on comp computational power. So they're trying to make this switch to 2.0, which is a proof of stake, and that in itself is very complex. I'm not going to pretend that I understand what the, the dynamics are to make that happen, but nevertheless, they do need to make it watertight. And if there is articles saying that it could happen, believe you and me, there are people that are going to try and make it happen. There are people that are waiting with bated breath that as soon as 2.0 launches, I can guarantee you there will be people trying to find backdoors in the code, backdoors in the sources, weaknesses, open parts so that they can get in and exploit it. That is why it's it's like almost like being a a, a, a lame fish within within a, a, surrounded by sharks in the sea. And they're all just they're all just waiting which one's gonna which one's gonna go for it, and so they really do need to get that right. But yeah, that's the Ethereum 2.0 news. It, it was quite quite popular news for for valid reasons. But yeah, this is why you might see the delay. But nevertheless, it's quite. I was going to say interesting, but I think that's the wrong word to use. It's it's quite um, apprehensive. For the, for the launch fit, I really want to see it happen, but I also really don't want to see anything. When I say see it happen, I mean the, the upgrade, not the attack. I really don't want to see the attack because I don't want to see the damage that that would do to this space that we all know and love. With that being said, let's pull away from the ETH 2.0 news and carry on our journey. Next up in our next pit stop, and I am happy to talk about this because I like 
Ripple, and it's good to see that there's some good news coming out of it, because um, all you seem to hear about at the moment is the Ripple and SEC case. I'm not going to go into that. There's, if you want to look at it, there's loads of articles. But this, let's just po uh, focus on the positive. And this reads, Ripple to launch Bitcoin and Ethereum Hub plans DeFi offering. Ripple will launch Liquidity Hub in 2022, letting its clients buy tokens like Bitcoin and Ethereum in addition to XRP. In brief, Ripple is launching a new service in 2022 called Liquidity Hub. It will let Ripple clients buy Bitcoin, Ethereum and three other tokens. The service could provide a key new revenue stream apart from selling XRP. Ripple is branching out the San Francisco-based company whose business strategy has been based around the cryptocurrency XRP since its inception, announced on Tuesday that it will be offering its clients a handful of other tokens too. So basically, yeah, they're going to be offering Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum Classic. And realistically, so the, 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 the setting up the, the, an exchange as such, it's, it's basically an exchange um, for the clients because what Ripple are doing at the moment is they are teaming up with a lot of banks a lot of central banks and national banks uh, so that the, the cross-border payments are fast because they can transact so many transactions per second and it also charges fractions of a cent to send your money uh, across, across borders which normally would take days to do with the current fiscal system and it will cost a lot more money. So now you can send whatever volume of money you want it transacts in seconds, it is over there in a matter of minutes instead of days, and it costs you a fraction of a cent. So then customers that are using that service, using the ledger, using Ripple's on-demand liquidity, that means that they are now able to use different coins as well. Whether it will run on the XRP ledger, I don't actually know how that will work itself. But nevertheless, it is a great move for Ripple. It's uh, diversifying themselves just... Not that they have to move away from XRP because they're never going to move away from XRP. But I think at the moment, because it's Ripple and XRP and the, the two are very much entwined with each other, I think that this is great news just to bring the eyes away from, from Ripple from from that whole is it isn't it a security XRP to you no, know, we're going to be offering more services. It's showing diversification it's showing the company is growing and it's expanding and it's wanting to try new things and it's great to see so yeah i just thought i'd drop that in the in the news today and with that being said let's pull away from ripple and let's carry on next up we are stopping over in india and surprise surprise india doesn't plan to ban it the uh, blank ban crypto as it said many times we are banning it we're not banning it this that and the other blah 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 anyway india plans to fast track new cryptocurrency bill seeks to take middle path to regulate crypto report and this is because there is money there is a lot of money in india and there is a lot of people making money in india and if they ban it they're going to upset some of their wealthiest people within india so, surprise, surprise, they are not now banning it. But it says, the Indian government is reportedly trying to fast-track a modified cryptocurrency bill to be introduced in the winter season of Parliament. India's crypto registration is expected to take a middle-path approach to balance all stakeholder concerns. Like I said, wealth. India reported modifying crypto bill to induce the start of winter season, introduced at the start of the winter season of Parliament. So, yeah, they are not trying to ban it anymore. They're just trying to see how they can sit in the middle and regulate it and understand where all the concerns are for cryptocurrency, basically. An outright ban on cryptocurrency is not seen as feasible because you can't ban crypto. You can ban exchanges, but you can't ban crypto. I could, I could walk into India and have cryptocurrency if that makes sense because I'm not a so you can't stop the cryptocurrency coming into your country because I could take my ledger and have cryptocurrency in the country you get what I'm saying anyway an outright ban on the cryptocurrency is not seen as feasible given a large number of Indians are investing in crypto assets the person explained adding the, the market making cryptocurrencies legal tender in El Salvador as El Salvador did is not an option either so basically, they're not going to say we are pro crypto, but they're also not going to say they are anti crypto. They are literally going to try and sit in the middle and figure out how they can regulate it. And by regulate it, I mean they're going to sit in the middle and try and understand how to tax it. 
which is simple. Not not taxing and not not taxing it simple. I don't I don't mean that, but yeah, rather than taking a staunch approach on it either way, just yeah, sit in the middle and have a open and reasonable idea on how to include the market, and then you'll get the best out of it. But nevertheless, <laughs> that's India not banning crypto again now. Uh, give it six months, they'll probably be banning it again after this report, but. Hey, who knows? Let's pull away from the India not planning uh, planning to ban it, but planning to try and regulate the crypto space news and carry on our journey. And in the last article that I want to cover, it is going over Zimbabwe. So basically, the government officials say Zimbabwe currently gathering views on cryptocurrency. So this was news uh, uh, last week that they were they were going to do something to do with it. I didn't cover it on my, my channel. I had other different news stories that I wanted to cover at the time. But an official with the Zimbabwean government recently confirmed the country's administration is currently gathering views about cryptocurrency from knowledgeable pe uh, persons. So... I'm, I'm not going to go into it. Basically, they're going to try and hold a uh, a, a report, or they're going to they're going to do some sort of research into cryptocurrencies for adopting it. Now, I have travelled to Zimbabwe. I've uh, I made friends with with my driver that was was from Zimbabwe, and he he told me a lot about it. And I understood when I got there how sometimes it's like you. you their their currency is so bad, and I'm not saying that in a in a in a derogatory way. It is really really bad, and I'm going to explain why. It's because when I when I went out for a meal in Zimbabwe, some of the restaurants they didn't want you paying on card because if you paid on card, that meant that the money went in the bank and there was no guarantee of them getting it, or they could be restricted to how much money they could pull out a day because there wasn't enough money within the country to facilitate the banks to give you that money. So they didn't like the money going in their banks. Not only that, they wanted you to pay in US dollars um, because, and I'm going to explain why, because they used to have multi-currency uh, availability and use within the country. And then in, I think it was March 2019, they they banned it and they brought out a Zimbabwean dollar and they said that this was going to be our currency, we're going to recover the economy and the, the currency and we're going to use this dollar. And the residents, they, they had no option but to buy into this currency, this Zimbabwean dollar, which was great until uh, some point in 2020 where the Zimbabwean dollar, well, it, it's not that it got abandoned, but what happened was they then allowed different currencies to become tender again within the country. So that meant that all the people that had Zimbabwean dollars, all the money in Zimbabwean dollars, it, the, the, dollar, the Zimbabwean dollar was worth nothing because American dollars came back in. So you can imagine, imagine if all your money was in this tender that you had to use and then overnight it became worthless again. I feel really sorry for the people of the country that has had that happen to them. Imagine all your, your assets just going to zero overnight. It's such such a bad thing to happen. So, yeah, and, and the fact that the American dollar is, 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 is so strong at the moment um, also means that, uh, sorry, is... I'll start that one again. The fact that the American dollar is not getting as strong now, it's it's starting to go down in, in value due to inflation. Let's let's see cryptocurrency get into the into the country. Let them let's see them adopt it because maybe that will provide them more stability. Let's let's get them let's get it in. Let's see them using it. I think it'll be really good for the country and I, I really want to see them see them use that. Nevertheless, that's the last bit of news that I wanted to cover and I'm going to pull away now and go to final pit stop, which is the travel round the price market. As you can see, the price is it's, it's a bit of a mixed bag at the moment. Bitcoin's pulled back from its all time high, but it's still up 2.2% on the on the day, but 67,700. Ethereum's kind of leveled out just below four thousand eight hundred dollars, and uh, Binance Coin is down two percent. Cardano's having a great day, up eight percent to two dollars twenty-eight. 
I'm sure we'll hear the news of why that suddenly took off because it, it's going against the flow. As you can see, there's there's a bit of a, a red red trend there. Solana's down 2%, uh, Polkadot's down 3%, XRP's down half a percent, and Dogecoin's down a percent. So that rounds off your your top ten there. Nevertheless, uh, the the market, the well, the sentiment, nevertheless, and the the prices are looking looking fantastic. And so I'm just going to leave it there. As always, if you have watched to the very end of this video, thank you so much. It means the world to me, and it makes me worthwhile doing these videos. If you want to comment on something that you might want to see in the video, please feel free because if you want to see it and you've watched to the end of this video now, you are more than welcome in my time and me for researching something that you'd like to hear about within one of our videos. So with that being said, I will wish you a good day. I hope you have a great day. I hope it's posture. I can't even say that word. I hope it's great, basically, and I hope your bags are doing well. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.